one, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One. Now this being recorded, right? One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two, one, one, one. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and I want to uh, welcome you for worshiping with us this morning here at Holtsy Temple Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. We're located at 1011 Washington Avenue, and I welcome you, those who are in person with us this morning and those who are watching on Zoom, those who are watching on Facebook live stream, as well as those who will later watch it on the YouTube uh, TV channel. You can watch it by just searching for Hosey Temple Maker. We again, we welcome you and we wish you a, a Merry Christmas in advance. This is Christmas Eve and we thank God for the allowing us to see another one, another brand new day, a day we've never seen before and a, a day we never will see. Again, brief announcements is certainly we won't have church school tomorrow, it's Christmas, and we will not have Bible study this coming Wednesday this week of Christmas. With that, that's our brief announcements for this morning. I'm going to ask Minister Jenkins if she will come and call our order of worship and follow that with the invocation uh, to begin our services. Thank you. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, our healer, Jesus, our deliverer, Jesus, our guide, Jesus, our protection, Jesus, our comforter, Jesus, our provider, Jesus, our savior, Jesus, 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 Emmanuel, God with us, the great intercessor, Jesus, let us pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you saying thank you, Lord, for this day. God, we welcome you in this place right now, God. Saturate us, consecrate us, fill us with your spirit, God. Have your way in this service today. In Jesus' name we pray. The great intercessor, amen and amen. If you have if you have your hymn books one two if you have your hymn books i'll turn it to page 62 or those who are here can see it on the screen uh we want to sing together old little town of bethlehem old little town of bethlehem we're going to sing the first second and then the last fourth verse oh little town of bethlehem how still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by yet in <clears throat> thy dark street shines the everlasting light, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above while mortals sleep the angels keep their watch of wandering love oh morning stars together Proclaim the holy birth. Then praises sing to God the King. And peace to men on earth. O holy child of Bethlehem. Descend to us. We pray, cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide in us, our Lord Emmanuel. Church, say amen. Let the church say amen again. If you mind, if you mind, would you please stand and affirm our faith? It is, we recite together the Apostles' Creed. What is it that you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. At this time, you may be seated. At this time, we will have our first Advent reading for the morning service. Yeah. 
Bible reading for the fourth Sunday of Advent, the candle of love. When the angel Gabriel visit Mary, announcing God's plan for her to conceive and give birth to the Messiah, Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? Luke, first chapter, verse 34. And yet, only a few months later, Mary sings to Elizabeth, My soul glorified the Lord, and my spirit rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Luke, first chapter, verses 46 through 49. I ask that the tech team put up on the screen, please. We, like Mary, hear God's call to be part of making God's dream of our salvation and flourishing a reality. And we question, how can this be? I am only, only, yet, like Mary, the only that makes us hesitant are God's gifts, gift, um, our gifts God can and will use as God's love transform us into bearing of good news. The congregation, would you read with me? We wait as people who have encountered divine love that disrupt the status quo and urges us into abundant life, marked by mutual love and peace that flows from the flourishing of all people. We light these candles. As a sign of our shocking hope, our just peace, our fierce joy and a love that transforms us. May love grows within us, transform us into bold witnesses of God's salvation and with our voices and our lives. Amen. be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. At this time, I want to uh, extend the opportunity to give your gifts, your tithes, and your offering. Um, again, we're at the end of the year, and we are at our end, uh, end of the 2023 year. This is the opportunity to give. I want to thank you all who all has supported the ministry here at the church. We want to thank you for your continued support. Uh, we are in progress of a major project, and so we need to continue asking for continued blessings upon us. Um, we ask, uh, we are, again, we ask that you, uh, if you, in your giving, you would mail your gifts or send it to the church located at Hosea Temple, See Me Church, 1011 Washington Avenue, here in Macon, Georgia. The good zip code is 31201. Or you may use the Giblify app and also search again for Hosey Temple in Macon, Georgia. And you can give that way. We thank you for your gifts and graces. And again, we're at the end of the year. And I say that because it's, if you are uh, writing your taxes, it's, it's an opportunity to write to benefits for your tax break. And so, because you get a dollar per dollar for every gift that you give and um, to nonprofit organizations, and we are one. And so we thank you uh, again. We thank God for you, and we pray that God will bless you mightily in, in, in your faith, in your giving, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time for prayer. 
And uh, <clears throat> I got a chance to, um, we lost a, a devoted member, a great person in my mind. She definitely influenced my life, uh, Ms. Lois Cook. Her celebration was this past Friday at 1, and I uh, got a chance to go. It was in Conyers, uh, Georgia. And so um, I got a chance to uh, give my condolences to her daughter, uh, Tony. And, uh, and so we just want to pray for the Cook family. Uh, and there are other families uh, who I may not be aware of with lost loved ones. We know we got people that are sick. You know, uh, we pray for our own health for a reasonable portion of health and strength. And we want to pray for this church and community. So let us go to the throne of grace and mercy. Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for um, just being God and being our God and allowing us to be your children. We thank you, dear Lord, for your love for us, the love that surpasses peace, that surpasses all understanding, just being in your, in your presence and, and the comfort of your arms. Lord, you know more than we ever know could know, and we are praying for those who are in need this morning as we celebrate your son's birthday on tomorrow and his coming uh, to live among us and to die and give his life for our salvation. We thank you for that gift of life that he, has, that he, um, that he lived and died for us. And so we, we, we thank you. We celebrate his life and what it means to us as his believers and followers. But we want to pray for our um, well-being. We want to pray for our church. We want to pray for the members of the church. Help us, dear Lord, continue to strengthen us, build us, and lead us and guide us to do your ministry and work in your kingdom. We pray for the community that surrounds us, dear Lord, that we could be instrumental. We want to pray for those who are without this morning as people are shopping about and busy about there are there are those who may be hungry there are those who may be homeless there are those who may be uh shelterless or even without clothing and so we think we we ask that you not only watch over them but help us come in some form of need for their needs Lord, we thank you for again we ask that you, we pray for this in the church and the community around us, but we also pray for the city. We pray for the state and, and this country, Lord. We are in such a division in this country and in the world. We pray for the evenness that uh, that is around and about. We pray for those who are in war. We pray for those who are in refuge, who are running for their lives, dear Lord, for a better place to live. Run for the safety of their lives and their family for a better opportunity, for a better place to live and lord we thank you again we pray for the leaders our leaders not only in the legislature or the white house or the house of representatives or the senate but the state houses the cities the counties but not only that we pray for the leaders of the church we pray for the members of the church universal that we could be represented to be represent be your representatives uh, proud representatives, not ashamed of your name, not ashamed of the, of the gospel, that we could be able to spread the good news in times like this, because it's a good time, dear Lord, that we celebrate. Again, this, this moment we call Christmas, but it's more than just Christmas, it's about Christ's birth. And so, Lord, we thank you again. We ask you to continue to bless us, be with us. Don't, as we leave this place, don't leave our presence, dear Lord, and be with each one of us individually and collectively. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. I think at this time we will have our song of preparation. Let us prepare our hearts.
one. Christ the Savior is born. I can't get started without my glasses. Daddy. <laughs> we need the bifocals. <laughs> so, I hope y'all enjoyed it and appreciated that. Uh, that sound from Aretha Franklin singing from Silent Night. I want to welcome everybody who's here. We got Sam. The ground number four is in our place today with his mom. We just thank him and Miss Helen and Minister Jenkins and my wife and John and my son Mike. We thank all y'all who are here in person. And we ask that you invite others to join us because it's nothing like to me. I mean, I can enjoy it. I have enjoyed it. I do watch our services afterwards most a lot of times. And it's pretty good. But it's nothing like the fellowship. Luke, the second chapter, verses one through seven. And it reads, in those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and it was taken while a query need Query Nidus, I know I may not pronounce that right, was governor of Syria. All around, all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting the child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. Come with me this morning with the Subject, no room. No room. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you once again to uh, become, be, be able to come to your throne of grace and mercy. We come, dear Lord, as humble as we know how. But we need to be, uh, we need grace and we need your mercy. And now I ask, dear Lord, as I stand before you and for your people that I proclaim your word to your people because it is yours. It is not mine. The battle is yours. It is not mine. And Lord, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you because you're my strength. You are my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. No room. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent and we just lit the uh, Candle focus upon love. Love. Love is big because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The Advent season of the Lord, Christians of early generations and centuries spoke of the first Advent as God's becoming incarnate in baby Jesus of Nazareth. Our second Advent see, uh, speaks of Jesus' second coming, that is to judge and to rule. Advent is a designated period for Christmas when Christians prepare for the celebration of Jesus' birth. We prepare. Prepare as in waiting in anticipation and waiting in excitement like a child waiting to open up those gifts from the Christmas tree. In our text today, we celebrate his first coming. At the beginning of Advent, the world, the first Advent, the world was aching for a Messiah. Those who were walking in darkness now get to see a, a great light. For a child is born. 
Kimberly Long in homiletic perspective in the Feast of the Word Preaching, she writes, Christmas is not merely an anniversary or celebration of Jesus' birth. That is, it is not just the making of an event in history, but it's the active remembering of what God has give, already accomplished in Jesus Christ. And it's the promise of the coming completion of God's reign. I don't want y'all to miss that it's an active remembering. <laughs> you got that. You really you got to, you know, you got to want to remember and you got to try to remember. You got to practice to remember what God has done. At Christmas, we proclaim not only the birth of Jesus, but the birth of the new creation. He, she, 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 refers, she refers to Revelation 21 where it talks about a new heaven and a new earth. I think it's 1 Corinthians around 5, 16 where it says those who are in Christ are new creations, are new creatures. And despite the new, what the newspaper seemed to say every day, the way has been made clear. The chasm, the divide between God and humanity has been bridged because of the birth of Christ and God's ring of justice and peace has already begun. During this season though, one of the questions asked when we greet each other is, are you ready for Christmas? Have you, have, are you ready for Christmas? And when we ask that question, the meaning behind the question is, have you done all your shopping? Uh, will you be out? Uh, or will you be out on Christmas Eve buying that last minute gift tonight? That's what we be asking. Though, are you ready? As a child, I remember when Christmas commercials on television w w used to be observed about a week after Thanksgiving. Then it went to a Black Friday. Shopping the day after Thanksgiving. Now the world wants us to start, start shopping the day after Halloween. We are extending the limits of our credit cards. And we're spending money we don't have. Calling it, and we call it getting in the Christmas spirit. With all the busyness of the so-called getting ready for Christmas, we tend to forget Jesus is the reason for the season. The world wants us to forget about Jesus in this season and replace the Christ that's in Christmas and put an X there. <laughs> Want to X Christ out, right? And take out the nativity scenes in public places and replace it with Santa Claus, Christmas trees, and lights. It is actually this this push about are you ready for Christmas is an actually a counterculture to savings and building financial wealth. We have no room for Jesus in our Christmas. We have no room for Jesus. Joseph and Mary they was they traveled to Bethlehem for a census registration. And it wasn't, it wasn't a vacation, Sam. <laughs> I say that because many times we have to, as a pastor, I have to go to these different uh, events and annual conferences and conferences, and it's not a vacation. Joseph has to spend his money out of his own pocket to get there for his registration. It was mandatory. Joseph was traveling in a tough situation, in rough terrain with a pregnant wife and an expected child. The decree that Caesar Augustus issued to census the entire Roman world was probably for tax purposes or uh, both the registry to, in case of a military draft. All we know is that all the people had to return to their own towns for registration. And it wasn't a vacation. 
Often, politics does not bend to our needs, as contemporary events make all too clear. We have struggled for justice in our community. Over any one of a, a number of issues, George Joseph sought shelter for Mary to give birth to her child, but there was no room. Apparently, earlier robbers, people had registered early, they did the pre-registration thing, <laughs> and they had gotten there early, and they had took up all the rooms. It came in droves, but the census had taken the rooms, they had taken it already leaving them without a place. Can you imagine how Joseph might have felt less than a man because he could not provide for his wife and child? So we often miss that emotional aspect because, you know, mental health is a, it's a really it's a hot topic these days, and we don't want to talk about emotions and stuff. I can imagine how he felt. He was looking for a place of safety and security for his wife and child to be. But Joseph had to obey as a citizen the rulers of his day. And while he was doing this, God's plan was unfolding. A different kingdom. There was this, this issue about the kingdom and the emperor Augustus and all that versus the political kingdom versus God's kingdom. There's always tension between the political kingdoms and God's kingdom. Sometimes we get caught up too in our own routine. We go to work, come home. We go to the doctor, we go to the grocery store and other needs, and we come home. We have responsibilities with our kids, and we have responsibilities with our parents. We worry about what the government's doing or not doing to make our lives better. But God work unfolds in spite, not, not despite life's other tasks, but in the midst of our daily lives. God not only works in the midst of our busyness, but God works even when we are left outside. God works despite our dysfunctional families, backgrounds, and environment. I like that because Jesus was born in a dysfunctional family. He's actually born in a scandal because Joseph was not his biological father. Joseph and Mary, they sought shelter to have their baby, but there were no room. Anybody feel like they have been left out, left behind? And there's a lot of isms that cause people to feel that there is no room for them in the places that they were born, either through racism, classism, or sexism. People feel as if they've been relegated to outsider status, that they too have to enter by the back door or sleep down the street. Last week, Sam and I was at our you know, usual place where we leave when we leave here. And we was talking to white gentlemen. We was talking about uh, the one that was brought up by the varsity in Atlanta was going to close. And one of the, one of the guys said, there was a, the varsity was in Macon. And I couldn't remember who, when it was. And he told me it was that located where the Sears Center Shop is. And I said, oh, that's why I don't remember. I couldn't go because of the color of my skin. I remember mama, there was no room for me see, at that place. I remember mama drew a drag me in the back of the bus because I wanted to sit behind the driver. And she drove me back to the back of the bus. You know why? Because there was no room for us. We have no room for people from the southern borders or for certain continents and nations. There's no room. Most people 
have some memory, especially in my community, of exclusions. But God's work was and is done in the midst of that exclusion. God makes a way out of no way. Even if things did not go as planned for Joseph and Mary, new life still broke forth. Jesus, God's work, arrived in the midst of the political events with no vacancies, no room. He still came. This is an important message to us today that even when things don't go as planned, God arrives. I wish I had a witness because I feel like saying amen myself on that one. The old folks used to say, he, God may not come when you won't. But he always, not only on time, but he's right on time. <laughs> Tradition are frowned upon today, traditions. But sometimes tradition is a great and biblical interpretation. Tradition highlights and deepens our understanding of scriptures bringing it with it the wisdom of our ancestors in faith. Today, the innkeeper is one of those characters because nowhere in the text today or even the other, the other one that may have mentioned this birth mentions the innkeeper. We get to see the innkeeper in pageants, you know, often portrayed in pageants, and they are often portrayed as cruel and heartless persons. Although Luke does not mention the innkeeper, it most likely was such a person. Because you know, it, it said he went to his home. He went back home. Well, he went back to where his people were from, to Bethlehem. So it could have been a relative. Could have been one of them home people, you know, home home boys or home sisters. Could have been an Uncle Joe or Aunt Sue or somebody said, we ain't got, we don't have room. <laughs> and I'm telling you, rejection from family really hurts. The end was probably not like the ends that we may think of. No, there was no hotel or motel during that time. In, in, in his best, the very best it could have been was probably a guest room in somebody's house. I, I remember when we used to have Savannah State Choir come up, come here to annually for their concerts for us here. That my mom and daddy, we, they know we had, a, we, 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 we would house a couple of the gentlemen who, with us. Now, remember, I'm probably my less than 10 years old. And so, That probably was the time where blacks couldn't have going to hotels in Macon, George. And we had to house our guests. You know, I mean, it's a movie called, and, and, and the real is real, Green Book, because we had to go to the places of safety where you could stay, where we have, you know, the stores of Ray Charles and all of them where they would come there to do their concerts, but had to stay in the houses and not in the hotel where their white musicians might be playing. No room. The inns in ancient times were probably, you know, you, I told you it was probably crowded. It was overcrowded and noisy places. They were probably drinking and all, I mean, all kind of little stuff going on, you know, in the in these, when you had a situation like this, it was a festival almost. But it usually could be dangerous. I hear homeless people talking about it. They, they, they're a little timid about going into these shelters because it could be very dangerous in those places. Uncomfortable place to have a baby. Perhaps though the innkeeper, we should commend him for finding them a quiet place. Out of the way kind of place. A place where Mary could give birth. No room in the inn for Jesus. I wonder how much room you have for Jesus during this Beezer season 
we call Christmas. With all the distractions this season brings, staying with Jesus, making room for Jesus, being really aware of Jesus, and feeling Jesus' presence with us can be challenging most days. It seems sometimes we focus on the exchanging of gifts can get in our way of experiencing Jesus' presence. The significant part of each memory of Christmas should always simply be in the presence of Jesus. I told you, it's active remembering. So we got to really want to be in the presence of Jesus. You got to spend some time with Jesus. It's good to be with Jesus. I don't care what season it is. That there may not be, there may not have been too many joyful souls in Bethlehem that night, that first Christmas. The census was imposing an unwelcome hardship on folks, and they had interrupted their lives to go register for the Roman government. But unknowing to them, however, good news of great joy was coming to the whole world. A savior was being born. If we don't make room in the hustle and bustle of the season, we will miss that joy ourselves. The joy that Jesus brings in our lives as believers. We used to, we heard, we hear it in we have heard it in church that the joy that I have, you know, the world didn't give it to me. So the world can't take it away. Jesus' incarnation made our salvation possible. And there is no earthly entity a power that can make that claim or take away from us the joy of our salvation. Jesus' birth brought a joy to a joyless world. It brought hope of salvation to a hopeless world. It brought many other blessings too, including unconditional love, unsurpassed peace, and eternal life. Make room for Jesus. Jesus' birth brought joy into the world and a joy into our personal lives. This Christmas, make Jesus the center of your joy. Richard Smallwood wrote, wrote the song, Jesus the center of my joy. He said, when I've lost my direction, you're the compass, compass for my life. You're the fire and light the, when nights are long and cold. In sadness, you're my laughter that shatters all my fears and when I'm all alone. No hand is there to hold. So you are why I find pleasure and the simple things in life. You're the music in the meadows and the streams. The voices of the children, my family and home. You're the source and finish of my highest dreams. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, the hope. For all I do, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. If you have not given your life to Christ, today is a good day. Christmas Eve is a good day. The day we celebrate, the day before we celebrate his birth, it's a good day to give your life to Christ. It, it is a good day because tomorrow, we think, we think, I mean, the Bible makes our promise to us. People die every day. <laughs> it's not a promise. If you, if, you, if, if you haven't given your life to Jesus, it's a good time. If you have, it's a good time to remember, actively remember, reclaim. You've been away too long. Now you need to come and reclaim your relationship, your position with God and with Christ. This is a moment of opportunity to do that. And you can do that by sending us an email on the screen, information on the screen, the cell phone number on the screen. You can do that, reach out to us. We will reach out back to you. We can talk about it. We ask that you come in. I love to be your pastor as we walk this journey called life. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. At this time, we have our lighting of Christ Handle. You need help.
the lighting of the Christ candle. To a people longing for hope and yearning for deliverance, the prophet Isaiah declared, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9. Ninth chapter, verses 2 and 6. Today, we come seeking hope, peace, joy, and love. And we find these things in a child. God made flesh as a baby in a manger. A baby who is born, who is both the beginning and the end of our salvation. Who dwells with us even now, our Emmanuel God with us. In congregation, we live as people in the in-between who celebrate the arrival of the light that shines in lost and broken places as we wait for the day when we fullness of God's kingdom. We have already lit light the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love that trans transform us. And Jesus Christ, our wonderful light, as we light the Christ candle. May the light burn in our hearts, guide us, comfort us, protect us, and tend us to all seasons and circumstances. Remind us that day and night, in the light and in the darkness, God is with us. Our salvation has come. Amen. Our Advent Psalm, please.
Amen. Our benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The love, yes, Lord God of the Father. And the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. As we make room, commune with us, abide with us, henceforth, now and forevermore, let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and have a merry, merry Christmas. Love y'all. Yeah, Merry Christmas.